Today on Smoky Mountain Food, Faith, and Fun, we're going to show you how to make homemade gyro meat from scratch at home. And it is wonderful. Stay tuned. Okay, so we ground our lamb just for the fun of it because I happened to find some lamb shoulder steaks at Aldi's and they were a good price and I had a meat grinder I wanted to try out. So we tried to do that and it worked out beautifully. But you don't have to grind your own lamb. You can certainly buy your ground lamb at the store. And um, I know stores like Publix and Kroger do carry it and sometimes even Aldi's carries it too. But we did it just for the fun of it. So for this recipe, we need one pound of ground lamb and one pound of ground beef. You can also use pork if you don't want to use lamb, but I do highly recommend that you use the lamb. Next, we're going to add all of our spices into the lamb and the beef. I went ahead and put them all together into a little bowl so that they can mix together so that they can distribute evenly throughout the meat mixture. And in our spices, we are going to use two and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm using iodized sea salt, two teaspoons of rosemary, two teaspoons of marjoram, two teaspoons of oregano, and two teaspoons of ground black pepper. You can reduce the pepper if you don't like pepper that much. Next, we're going to add a heaping tablespoon of minced garlic. I'm using the garlic in the jar and that's just fine because you got to have garlic flavor in all that yummy Greek food. And then we're going to add minced onions, which Brooksy so lovingly minced up for me in the manual food processor. So you can do this two ways. You can use your hands and really, 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 really need that meat and spices and onion and garlic all together. And it's almost going to be whipped together like a crazy pate or a really soft meatloaf. But the easiest way is to go ahead and use the whipping tool on your mixer because it's really, really going to get it to that consistency that it needs to be at. With our mixer, we did put all of the ingredients in our mixing bowl that goes on our KitchenAid, uh, so we don't have to use more than one bowl. And as you can see, all of our ingredients are in there, and hopefully you have a good view of what's going on in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on around level two right now and get it started. And then we're going to turn up the juice on this baby and let it whip. I feel like I should be doing the whip and the nae nae. And we're just going to let it do that for a few minutes. All 
that was maybe two minutes. And if you can see, that meat almost looks like a paste. So I'm gonna bring the bowl down. And I'm gonna take this down and show you. Get the bowl off. What we got. Almost looks like a paste. So I'm gonna bring you back in just a second and show you what we do next. Super easy. Alrighty friends, we are back and now it doesn't really get much easier than this. If you've ever eaten a meatloaf, you kind of press it into a pan. Well, this isn't going to be a loaf. This is kind of going to be like a bar. But you're gonna press it into a pan. This pan is, I guess, seven by 10 in size. It fits in our toaster oven oven, which is, as always, our preferred appliance to use if we're not making something big. And we've got our oven preheated at 350 so that this will bake. And I can tell you, and it's so sad there isn't smell of vision. I say this every time. The smell of the spices and the meats all kind of melded together is wonderful. So if you see that, how I'm smoothing it out, it's almost like a pate, it really is. Um, but I won't suggest that because I don't personally like liver pate. <laughs> but that's kind of the consistency that this ends up being. I want to get it as evenly spread out and smoothed out as possible so that your, your meat will be uniform. All right. Now this is something that you can make ahead and you can freeze the meat once it's been cooked. You probably could freeze it like this too uh, and it would be fine. But we generally eat it. <laughs> made a double batch you'd need probably a 9 by 13 pan and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of take my hands and carefully pat it down to make sure that it's pretty even in size and how it's sitting in the pan now we're gonna put this in the oven like I said 350 for about an hour it is going to shrink significantly because there is a lot of fat in both lamb and beef. Even though I tried to buy leaner, leaner cuts, there's still going to be fat. But once I put it in the oven, I'm going to show you when it's finished what we do to finish this up. And I think you're going to love it and be surprised at how authentic it looks, this might not be an authentic method, but as they say, there are many ways to skin a cat. And so, to save money and to know what's in my gyro meat, get old meat, however you wanna say it, this is how we do it. Because I'm gonna be honest, we ordered gyros out in the last few years and it just isn't good. It feels very processed. It doesn't taste like it should. I'm from the Chicagoland area, Northwest Indiana area, and we have good gyros in the Northwest, in the, in Northwest Indiana area. And these stack up to what I grew up with. So I'm gonna put it in the oven and then we'll come back and finish them up. Okay, friends, we have a giant hamburger. No. I told you it would shrink a lot, <laughs> and it did. So this is what comes out of the oven when it's finished. 
Now I'm going to show you what we do with it. Um, it does kind of look like a giant hamburger, but let me tell you, this house smells so amazing. Even Brooks is in there going, I think I'm salivating. So, yeah, it smells so good. It smells like a, it smells like a Greek ghetto <laughs> restaurant. So, I'm going to have to just slide this off of here. Very unconventionally so I've got a piece of foil and a paper towel because there is some grease obviously on the gyro meat and put it on the paper towel and it really doesn't look like much right now and I understand that but I promise you, if you stick with me, you will you will totally get it and see how amazing it is. So it is got some grease. So we're going to use the paper towel to kind of press some of that grease out. And the grease is mostly in the pan, but we don't want super greasy ghetto meat. So... There we go. All right. You hear the kitties, they are saying, Mama, it is almost dinner time. So I have flipped it over. And. Okay, we have flipped it over and now we are going to wrap it up in the foil nice and tight because now comes the process that doesn't make sense, but when it's all said and done, it makes a lot of sense. So just wrap it up, make sure that it's good and tight, have your little prep mat or cutting board there, and you're going to place on top a very heavy skillet or pots. I'm using two iron skillets here. Um, you can use a pot with heavy canned goods in it. Anyway, the point is to go ahead and press the meat down for about a half an hour to an hour to condense it so that you can slice it and it's got that gyro texture that you're used to having in your gyro sandwich. So we're going to come back in an hour and slice it and show you what it looks like and put it together in some sandwiches and salads and eat. Come back soon. Okay, friends, about an hour has passed since we put the cast iron pans on our gyro meat. And that is what we have. And if you touch that, it's kind of, it's just kind of dense. Whereas if it, we hadn't done that, there would be a lot more give there and uh, more air. So really what we are going to do is super simple. We're going to go ahead and cut very thin slices, kind of like what you might find on a gyro sandwich out in a restaurant. And as we're slicing it here, you can already see um, that it, it looks like regular gyro meat. So you're just going to slice the slices. We're going to do a few for a salad and a, and a pita and to show you different ways of using the gyro meat. But the sky is the limit with this stuff. It's so good. You're going to love it. I'm so excited. So we're going to go ahead and keep slicing enough to have a serving. And I guess this is probably going to make um, one small salad and one small pita. And um, the rest we can freeze or have later. Uh, we generally eat it <laughs> before we can freeze it because it's so good. I'm going to go ahead and show you what the meat looks like inside. You can see the spices and just how it's kind of dense 
and compact it together and that's what the pressing with the heavy pots or whatever it is you want to use to press it down will do. So really, all we really need to do at this point is head over to the stove and brown our gyro meat just a little bit in the pan to give it a little bit of crispy crunchy and then we're going to build our sandwiches. We're just going to throw a gyro into the pan for a real quick sear. Don't need any oil. You're just gonna, you're kind of just gonna get a little crispness on there. Okay, it's probably been two minutes and we're going to give it a flip and see how it just kind of caramelized on the outside getting that crispy that crispy thing on the edges that we like about gyros. So really that is all you need to do is Throw it in the pan for a minute or two and let it brown up and crisp up and then you build your sandwiches. Very, very simple. We're going to build our sandwiches in just a moment. Alright, we are going to build a mini pita sandwich. This is actually non bread. It's an Indian flatbread because I couldn't find regular pita this weekend, but that's okay. Non bread is basically the same thing. We've got some tzatziki sauce. I did not make the tzatziki sauce this time. The Aldi's tzatziki sauce is delicious. We've got feta cheese, tomatoes, and onions. And a lot of people do like the lettuce on pitas. We're not really a fan of lettuce on pitas, so we don't use the lettuce. If you like it, you use it. So I have got make this look like the real deal. I'm gonna slather on our tzatziki sauce and I like quite a bit. You do you, whatever you like. You can also use hummus, hummus is wonderful. I'm gonna lather, layer on, lather on, not lathering on anything. Very nice strips of our gyro, some tomato, and some onion. You put on your pita what you like on your pita. That's plenty. And just another dollop for me of the tzatziki. And there you have it. Looks authentic, doesn't it? That's because it is. It and there it is. The pita. Perfect little homemade gyro sandwich. Alrighty friends, we are done with our gyros meat and it is so beautiful and it smells so yummy and I'll admit I've already tasted it and it is delicious. So what we ended up with is we've got one beautiful gyro salad that's got the gyro meat, the red onion, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, tzatziki sauce, feta cheese olives and uh, the Greek olives and of course the gyro meat and then we've got a beautiful little mini gyro that has all of the same stuff except we don't have any lettuce or olives uh, in there but 
Um, I wanted to do this video mainly because um, that is one of my favorite things is I love, love gyro meat and here in East Tennessee finding a really good gyro these days has become really difficult. There are a few restaurants that have pretty good ones um, but most of them have kind of gone to a really processed not really that very good geared on me and I decided one day to do some research and came across several recipes and then sort of made up my own uh, recipe um, to come up with the gyro meat and this makes probably enough for eight nice sandwiches or salads and that's definitely a, a money saver um, when you consider if you go out to dinner, um, nine, ten dollars is what you're going to pay for a gyro sandwich, sometimes more. So with the meat, which was about fifteen dollars, and then the bread and everything, you're probably in three or four dollars for a sandwich. So to me it's worth it and to know what is in my meat and you can freeze it um we don't it doesn't usually last long enough for us to freeze it uh but at some point i may make a double batch and do just that just so we've got gyro meat anytime we want it um if you don't like lamb you can use pork but i will say this if you have had a gyro and you like the flavor of a lamb and beef gyro the unique flavor that you're tasting is not just the spices, but that is the lamb. So if you like that, then you like lamb. Um, otherwise, you definitely need to use a, a fattier meat like pork to mix with the beef in order to try to achieve the correct gyro flavor. But I don't think you really can until unless you use lamb. So that's kind of my take on it. I know it's sometimes hard to think about eating lamb but it's a delicious meat it really is and you should give it a shot so Brooksy and I are gonna have dinner and um, we hope that you will enjoy trying this yourself sometime we do ask if you'll like our our page Smoky Mountain Faith Food and Fun our YouTube channel that helps us it's gonna help us grow if you share us with your friends we would really appreciate that because once we get to a thousand subscribers we can do a whole lot more so we're really trying to build our channel up and so we're pushing out the videos <laughs> as many as we can so that we can continue to build uh, god bless you we are always here to pray for you that first and foremost this is a ministry for us uh, we love we love people and we want to share with people and we want to share burdens with people so if you have prayer requests you can always email us at ramseyneemail at gmail.com or leave a comment if if you don't mind it being out there and we will definitely add you to our prayer list because we are a praying home uh, we love you don't forget to like and subscribe hit that little bell at the bottom that tells you when we upload a video and go make you some gyro meat bye bye